What's going on everybody, it's Alpha Chino here, and we are here with something special today. What we'll be seeing is Season 2 of X Defiant that is going to be coming out, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, it's going to be roughly 25 minutes, so we're going to go over everything and probably do like a little breakdown as well. Try to talk a little more about some of the stuff that they have in here. Want to be able to do this without Ubisoft, so again, thank you Ubisoft for gifting this to us, uh, for being able to see this content and be able to go over everything so uh let me know in the comments what you guys think about season two x defiant what do you expect to be an x defiant so without further ado let's get into it so x debrief welcome back to x debrief the official x defiant show I'm your host, Yusuf Garcia McGee, and we have a massive season two reveal episode for you today. Okay. We'll be diving deep into the new Highwaymen faction, showing off the three new weapons, giving you an inside look into the So new faction mode, is the Highwaymen. private matches. New guns. Unveiling the first new map of the season. Bomb is the new search and destroy. Some of the updates coming down the road. Waterfront, now, okay, I am new not map. just here to tell you what's coming. We're here to show you what's coming. Okay. Here's everything you can expect from season two. So an overview of season two. So the new faction is the Highwayman, which are these people. Revs up. Like a biker gang. So you got a grenade launcher. Scrap turret. Okay. A saw launcher. Jeez. That reminds me of like Unreal Championship. Waterfront is at the launch. Okay, signal. Air and space. Yes, it's back. Air and space is back. Man, I know this is going to be insane. Three new weapons and one new device. Okay. Smoke grenades, looks like. Oh, it's the L86. Okay. L Spaz 12. I did see that. That's cool. I wonder if it's going to be like the status of that. I wonder if it's going to be like the in between the 870 and the A12 or what? Dude, they look really sick, though. Private matches. So now you could like do 1v1s. Or you can, or people can start doing tournaments. 90 tier battle pass. Okay. Ready for season two. Season two is bringing some banger updates, y'all. And we're gonna talk about all of them in depth, but we gotta start with our new Highwaymen faction. Yeah, I'm curious. So it looks like the saw launcher, I think is the ult. That's what it looks Highwaymen like. Highwaymen don't ask, we take. These are the Highwaymen, ruthless survivors from post-apocalyptic Hope County, Montana, led by twin sisters Mickey and Lou. Our pops told us people either make Who's the Highwaymen from? Is that like, is that Far Cry? Like, like what, what game? Highwaymen are cocky and lethal. Probably look that up. into battle with a whole lot of firepower. Firepower, like the M79 grenade launcher, which does pretty much what you'd expect. Yeah, that looks area-based. Like... Or like their scrap turret, an automated machine gun that rains hell on enemies. Okay. Highwaymen revel in chaos, so their rate of fire and reload speed ramps up as they rack up kills. Oh. Oh, wow. I didn't notice that. Okay. And to top it all off, they brought their saw launcher to the party. Wait, did that? Oh, it ricochets. Oh, my God. Can you get hit by it? Like... Hit by your own blade? High or no? Pace, high damage, no mercy. This Whoa. is what men are all about. A little rabbit got the move. That's sick. Ruthless, yet resourceful. Colorful, but chaotic. The apocalyptic marauders of Hope County are ready to go on a rampage in season two of X Defiant.
We're here to give you a faction rundown on their destructive trait, abilities, and ultra of our newest faction, the Highwaymen. I feel like people the are going to complain about that. The Highwaymen are a ragtag group of bikers with a colorful <clears throat> sense of style and scrappy ingenuity. Their miscreant gang consists of Paolo, an obnoxiously cocky grifter from South America whose stripped down but ruthless attitude saw him thrive in the post-apocalyptic world of 2035. Lil T, the son of a notorious pro linebacker before the apocalypse that not only picked up his father's nickname on the field, but also his ability to inflict some career-ending injuries. And Nova, an ambitious highwayman who's only ever known her crew as she's collected deadly skills and kept okay. a keen eye on taking over as leader. They've not only survived, I'm very curious what game this is. dominated the wasteland by employing indiscriminate or lethal force wherever they go. The highwayman's passive is revved. As you rack up consecutive kills, this passive will ramp your rate of fire and reload speed, making oh, you a shoot. snowballing monster on the battlefield. Your passive appears at the bottom of your screen to indicate its current state. You'll start at medium following your first kill, okay. followed by high with your second, and finally and maximum out. after four kills. Dying will reset the stacks on your passive. The two abilities in your arsenal are Scrap Turret and okay. the M79. <laughs> While it might look like a hunk of junk, the Scrap Turret is a deployable turret with 360 degrees of coverage. It's the perfect companion to set up and give you and your team some cover fire while you take or hold down an objective. The M79 is fairly straightforward. It's a grenade launcher. You see an enemy? Blow him up. I wonder what the blast radius is on that. Blow it up. See an objective? Blow that up. Spider bot? Definitely blow that up. You'll get two shots with it. Okay. After using both shots or upon switching, it will seconds. be placed on cooldown. 30 second cooldown. Their ultra okay. is the Saw Launcher. As chaotic a creation as the people wielding it, this weapon launches buzzsaw blades that ricochet off the walls, making it a close quarters nightmare for the enemy team. Wait, how long does These the blade go? These saw blades will remain bouncing around the area for a small period of time okay. before they are destroyed. Okay, I was we like, laid out uh... the basics. So now let's talk about how you can utilize the highway men's kit. Revved is a dream passive for those looking to drop a bomb in their next match. Getting consistent kills means you're gaining valuable free stats to your weapons. Yeah, people. If you're feeling confident in stacking your passive, okay. you can drop the attachments focused on reload speed and rate of fire from your build and opt for other important stats like decreased recoil, expanded magazine capacity, or increased movement speed. The Scrap Turret is the perfect wingman for holding objectives or raining bullets onto your enemies from an unexpected angle. That is crazy. Its relatively low profile means if thoughtfully placed, you can overwhelm a charging enemy before they even know what hit them. Try placing it under low walls or vantage points overlooking high traffic lanes of the map. Oh, this is going to be crazy. Clearing out a congested area is the M79's greatest strength. Use it to clear out clustered enemies or any placed abilities hindering your team's progress. Okay. You'll find that the drop off for this ability is pretty harsh. So aim high if you're going long. Otherwise, you'll find it best used at medium range. At close range, you'll have difficulties exploding anything, though it can be used to deal oh, pretty okay. significant damage to a single enemy. So you can still do a direct hit. Them. Finally, the saw launcher is best used in close quarters combat. This is a gonna direct be hit with it will kill most base health enemies. If you find your enemy holed up somewhere, you can cause a bit of chaos by launching it into the walls of the room and giving them some blades of whirling death to worry about before you go in to confirm the kill. The highwaymen are a force to be reckoned oh with, my offering gosh. a multitude of ways you can punish your enemies with overwhelming force. These are just a few ways you can use them but we'd love to hear about the ways you plan on using them. Tag at PlayXDefiant on Twitter or use the hashtag Faction Rundown to share your strategies with us or join our official Discord to discuss it with other members of the community. That's it for our Faction Rundown. That though. is crazy. Good luck out there. Embrace yourself for the highwaymen. Okay, a grenade launcher, an auto turret, that's gonna be like a T that's a TDM and like hot shot in season two, game or like a, a mode like for that mode. Heat, Season 2's free battle pass includes three new weapons, the PP-19 SMG, the L-86 LMG, okay. and the Spaz-12 shotgun. Here's everything you so need we, to know about So them. we get the buys on. All right, cool. Uh, how's the buys on though? 50 bullets. Hey, everyone.
everyone. Looks like My it hits. name is CC Smith, and I'm Associate Director of Live Operations at Ubisoft San Francisco. Today, I'm excited to walk you through our upcoming Season 2 weapons. Our fifth SMG, the PP-19, occupies a unique space within the class. While our current submachine guns focus on movement speed and rate of fire as their main strengths, this one's the like PP-19 main ammo. focuses on damage and accuracy. Oh. The PP-19 has the highest damage and headshot multiplier of any SMG and oh. tops its class with the fewest shots to kill. We've coupled the increased damage with a large magazine, longer wait, ranges, until after and a more my, consistent my, my piece on pattern. It. And these unique characteristics I feel like that's gonna be, it's gonna be a problem, is perfect I feel like. for players who love the feel of SMGs but prefer a more controlled pace of play. Solve that problem. One loadout option that we've seen work well for this weapon is increasing its range by combining the barrel extender with the chrome lined barrel. Another attachment combo the team likes is pairing the muzzle booster with the rapid fire barrel which increases the PP-19's rate of fire. When rounding out your loadout, the quick mag and the fast mag are both good options for speeding up the PP-19's reload time. And if you're looking to improve mobility, the quick draw grip, fabric grip, and the folded stock will do the trick. With the L86, we wanted to introduce a faster Ooh. option to the light machine gun weapon class. Nice. It features a bullpup design, making it more compact and allowing players to run faster, aim faster, and shoot faster than the heavyweight LMGs that are currently available. I'm actually this excited focus to use this gun. Handling gives the L86 a more assault rifle-like feel and offers a totally unique experience within the LMG class. It's the perfect weapon for players looking for a middle ground between the AR and LMG classes. Mm. While the L86 does less damage and holds less ammo than the other LMGs, it has one of the fastest times to kill between 30 and 45 meters. Oh, okay. This makes it a very strong option when playing on both linear game modes and bigger arena maps like Mayday, Attica Heights, and Liberty. When creating a loadout for the L86, okay. there are two predominant schools of thought. Either lean into its strengths by improving its rate of fire and mobility with attachments like the rapid fire barrel and the super light grip, or you can offset its weaknesses with the vertical grip and the extended magazine. Attachments that pair well with the L86 include the muzzle booster, rapid fire barrel, super light grip, and the lightweight stock, all of which lean into the weapon's strengths. The L86 is also versatile in that you can opt to increase its range with attachments like the barrel extender and the chrome lined barrel or you can increase the size of the magazine with the extended mag. Okay. The iconic SPAS-12 is our fourth shotgun and immediately carves its own space among the class favorites. The core stats place it between the AA-12 and the M870, and it offers a powerful mix of the strengths and weaknesses I, of okay, both. So it is As a semi-automatic shotgun, it's capable of one-shot kills, but truly excels in situations that require a second shot to finish off an opponent. Mm -hmm. While a bit cumbersome to carry and reload, the s 12 stands out as a bold and relentless option for players that want to embody their favorite action heroes. It's especially strong on smaller maps with tighter engagement ranges like Arena, Echelon HQ, and Showtime. The best options for improving range are the Choke and Barrel Extender. We've found that by combining these attachments with the Remove Stock allows you to better manage that distance to your opponents. This weapon has improved spread while aiming, so there's also value in adding attachments that increase the ADS walking speed. We can't wait for you to get your hands on these new weapons and to see the loadouts that you come up with. Let us know in the comments what your favorite weapons are. Love OC is still my favorite. I'm an LMG guy? Mm, probably not. But maybe you will. I feel like the bi the bison I feel is going to be a problem. One reveal, we gave you a tease at the new upcoming bomb mode. Well, today we're fully revealing it and giving you an inside look into what makes bomb so unique. Because it's like S and D. We finally have a one life S and D mode. Love it. Look, if you had one shot, one opportunity to seize the bomb and plant it, would you capture it or let it slip? Well, Did he just really quote get ready Eminem. For that opportunity because X Defiant's new he one did. life mode, Bomb, is coming in season two. In Bomb, two teams of six will be split into attackers and defenders and switch sides every round. Attackers will be tasked with picking up the bomb and planting it at one really? of two locations while defenders try to prevent the bomb from being planted or defuse it once it's been planted. Eliminating the opposing team will automatically win you the round, except in the instance when attackers have already planted the bomb, in which case defenders will still need to defuse it to win. Okay. 
The first team to win six rounds wins the entire match. Of oh. course, with only one life per round, tension is at an all-time high, and I'm strategy and communication go. are more important than ever. A well-placed shock wire, revealing oh, intel soup scan, or a cheeky spider bot deployment can be the difference between a win and a loss. There's a lot of people asking for a one life tactical mode. Yes. And so we're we're trying to deliver on that. We want players to take all things, not just the match into consideration, but like the loadouts and their faction abilities and the gadgets they use. And you know how they're gonna coordinate as a team. Map positioning is key. You need to be able to hold down power positions. And so looking at approaches to bombs, since there's two sites, you, you kind of have to split your focus. As the other team, they can even, you know, use counter tactics, they can set a diversion. Abilities are huge. I think ADS is going to be a sleeper pick uh, for abilities. You know, being able to put something down where a device is going to be nullified before it gets to you, so you can throw one down, start defusing a bomb. Highwayman for this is going to be see insane. A bunch of grenades heading out your direction, and hopefully you'll you'll be able to, to knock those out. Obviously, Trophy tried system. and true is like Intel suit and, and Mag Barrier are key, as well as active camo. Like using a jet nair, setting a bomb to be active, and then hide in a corner, go camo, and you just look at the bomb until someone tries to disarm it. Okay. Your weapon selection is also just as important. And I think it even varies based on like the role you're playing. A lot of people just think, what can I do or what ability should I pick to be effective for just me? But you can't think about that in, in bomb. It's much more of a team-oriented game mode. I would say the number one tip when you first get into bomb, be very careful with your life. You have one. I would say that's even more important than your skill selection and the weapon you use. You just have to remember, like, if I get an engagement and I lose, I'm done for that round and I'm no longer helping my team. And if that still happens, communicate with your team. At least they'll know, like, hey, there are three people over here that I just ran into. So our plans for Bomb is to first release it just on the casual playlist. Uh, okay. We want to get it out there, get people experience with it, and more importantly, get their feedback and see what they like, what they don't like. Get a good feeling make of adjustments it. adjustments okay. before we drop it into the ranked playlist. Players have been asking for I feel like it'd really be a good rank mode. exciting strategic mode, and I think we're going to deliver it with this. In addition to Bomb mode, Season 2 is bringing something the community has been asking for since day one, private matches. Here's systems designer Pat Price to tell you more. So people can do tournaments, so they can start doing tourneys. We don't use uh, public matches. Private matches are coming to X Defiant. And this so will right be now I think it's kill races. I think that's what we're doing. Completely custom game for you and your friends. You'll be able to select the map, the mode, whether that be an unranked or ranked version. You'll be able to set how many players you want to play with in that lobby. And typically in X Defiant, you can only play 6v6 in unranked or 4v4 in ranked. In private match, you can completely customize this, whether it be a 1v1, a 2v2, or trios. You have that option to play how you want to play. Good way to private study maps is something and that routes. We many of our fans have wanted, and we're going to support it and have it evolve over time. Like many of our features in X Defiant, community feedback is really important so we can give players the best experience possible. Okay. We're really excited to see what our players do with this feature, whether it be grassroots tournaments, party games, or yeah. just playing with your friends. And this is the only place in Next Defiant that you'll be able to do that. We think this is a great tool for the community, really no matter who you are. If you're an aspiring pro sick. player, a caster, a content creator, or just looking for a night of games with your friends, this is going to elevate the X Defiant experience, and we can't wait to see what the community does with it. Heck yeah. You'll be able to play any of your no new friends yeah. matches on any of X Defiant's seven. This would be cool. Maps, this is gonna be cool. And the new map launching with season two, Waterfront. Here to give you a breakdown of the Waterfront map is our map expert, Layla. Yeah, the map design look well, for this looks very interesting. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Hope County with our latest map, Waterfront. Though it may not be the warm welcome you're hoping for. Hi folks, my name is Layla and I am the Global Maps Producer at Ubisoft San Francisco, supervising all of our incredible map teams as they work to bring your favorite Ubisoft franchises to X Defiant. The Ubisoft San Francisco map team hopes this new arena-style map will help you ring in a new dawn as you play game modes like Occupy and Hotshot. Hope County after the collapse is a colorful and dangerous place where the people you meet are just as likely to be friend as they are to be foe. In order to properly capture that feeling, we opted for a larger map size to give our teams the space they needed to pay homage properly. 
This meant leaning into a longer range playstyle, which gives you a chance to put your marksman and sniper rifles to good use. Okay. Just be aware, there could still be danger lurking around every corner, and that includes our new threat in Season 2, the Highwayman faction. They have made themselves right at home in this skate park slash music stage area, adding their signature colorful flair and makeshift watchtowers pretty much everywhere. We also wanted cool. to make sure we captured the beautiful natural landscape, so we chose a waterfront location to convey a sense of peace amidst the chaos. The post-apocalyptic backdrop offers the chance to explore abandoned structures and empty sheds that tell their own story. This is also the perfect playground to try out the Highwaymen's unique skills. Find clever spots to slap down a scrap turret to greet unwanted visitors. Or take your enemies by surprise when rounding a corner with your M79 grenade launcher aimed directly at them. Better yet, try firing off your Ultra in the skate park and watching the buzzsaws bounce around as you rack up kills. We had a lot of fun coming up with an exciting map to welcome That's gonna be the terrifying. to X Defiant. Using, using that ult is going to be terrifying. I'd encourage you to soak up the beautiful end. environment around you, so I'm not sure the enemy team will give you the same courtesy. So enjoy the super bloom at your own risk. A big thank you again to the MAPS team at Ubisoft San Francisco for helping bring Hope County to X Defiant with the waterfront map. Okay. Now get out there and make Mickey and Lou proud, or they may just have to go rabbit hunting. Payback. In addition to Waterfront, Season 2 is bringing two additional maps, Signal and Air and Space, meaning soon X Defiant will feature 20 different maps. Show me Air and Space. Now, to wrap things up for today, we're going to check in with community developer Zach Padgett. Show me so Air and Space. look at space. what's coming down the road for X Defiant. Hey everybody, I'm Zach Paget, the community developer on X Defiant. What's going on, Zach? I hope you've been enjoying the special edition of X Debrief for our season two reveal. Recently, we shared the year one roadmap for X Defiant, and let's dive into it. As you know from watching this video, we have a new faction coming with season two, the Highwaymen. Okay. As well as new weapons, a new Mantle, mode, player bomb collision that's improvements, been requested step by and audio, the top 500 in the leaderboards. We also have Body map voting life. for ranked and ranked loadouts the beta and launch of private ranked matches. map voting. Nice. But it doesn't end there. In season three, you're getting a new faction, new weapons, new attachments, new maps that are honestly quite amazing, as well as a new mode and the full launch of private matches. There's also additional features coming in season three, such as prestige mode, prestige rewards, faction mastery, and oh yeah, kill cam. Wow. Then we'll have season four which is going to bring a new faction, weapons, maps, device, mode, weapon skin challenges, and more features to come. We can't wait for you to play all of these seasons, and so we actually have a special treat. Okay. This Friday, you'll be able to test out Season 2 on PC for three hours. We'll have Whoa. more details on social media, but we can't wait to see what feedback you might have for Season 2. Now, let's watch some amazing clips that have been submitted by you, and we'll see you next time. Okay, that's cool. Oh, he's been work. It's a uh, PlayStation. Okay. Right around the corner. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. I was waiting for the sniper. I wonder if, if they're going to like touch on that a little bit, like when it comes to the, the stuff. Is that it? All right. Wait. Game's free, free to play. Obviously, it's on PC and everything. All right, so there is a good amount of stuff to, uh, that we can go over. So we do. So the new faction is the Highwaymen. Who like? I gotta look them up. Um, Highwaymen is. I'm trying to figure out what game. Like, where are they from? <laughs> there's already leaks and stuff on it around this time. I'm already saying like there's already leaks about it. Oh, that makes sense now. Okay. Oh, so okay. So people are saying it's. They're saying that it is from Far Cry. Far Cry New Dawn. So they're from Far Cry. Okay, so we are so we have Libertad and then now we have Yeah, we have Libertad and now we have 
highwaymen. That's cool. Okay. Okay. At first, like I was thinking of um, Riders Republic, but I was like, whoa, doesn't make sense. But anyway, all right. So a good amount of stuff that we can go over. So we have the new faction, and we have a few things: the new maps, Waterfront, which is highwaymen's uh, main level you know everybody has a theme of a level for each or each faction has a theme for a level so waterfront is theirs signal signal looks like uh it looks like a highwayman it looks like libertad just because it's very colorful uh there are i see like a little bit of some skulls and stuff it just it looks like far cry far cry theme air and space so this is legendary. The reason why I say this is legendary and I'm so excited about having air and space that is coming back is because this was in the insider sessions that we got to play. This was in like, I think it was the close. I think it was in the closed beta as well or the technical test. And then I believe it was in the closed beta and then it wasn't in the open beta. I could be wrong though. But playing this map was so much fun, especially playing Occupy and Domination. I don't know how it's going to be on, on TDM. I don't know how it's going to be on Bomb, but it is going to be insane and I, I i can't wait i can't wait to play this map again because it's, it's so good because you had like the space shuttle right here where there's like it's it's hard to see but behind the s it's like a platform where you can easily snipe or that you can snipe from or use a marksman rifle but also you can get picked off and then there's a spot in like there's like a different section of it in that in that different section of the area uh there's like a like the mars rover and then like the whole theme of like that area is mars so it's pretty cool it's very small condensed spot so if you have a grenade launcher, if you have some grenades or something, it's like, it's pretty crazy. Or if you use one of them, or if you use the turret, you could like do some damage in that, in that room. Especially if you're playing Occupy and that's one of the spots. Oh man, it's, it's, it's GG's. So, uh, but I can't wait to, for this to come out. Like this spot, oh my goodness. So if I recall from the insider sessions, this wasn't open. Like there, there was no like opening area. It was literally like you came in here and then there's like a, a like a, a platform. It was like a U-shaped platform. I wish I had like recordings of it, but obviously we weren't able to because we were under NDA. But there's like a little platform uh, that was like round and then there's a ladder that you can climb up and it was pretty cool. Um, a lot of people were like using, I just know everybody was ripping with the MP5s. I just remember that. And then some people had the sniper rifles. I think it was the TAC-50 everybody was running. Uh, M44s, they kind of did some work, but it was mainly TAC-50s everybody was going for because we knew it was a one shot. This is a one shot done. So bomb. So everybody knows bomb, 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 bomb is basically S&D, search and destroy. Everybody knows like almost in, in almost every competitive type of arena shooter, they have some type of search and destroy-esque type of game. And I'm actually excited about this one. Now I know there's going to be some, some issues. I'm just going to say it now. There's probably going to be some issues with the game already because I can already sense it. Players with a lot of suppressors. Players are going to be using suppressors as a main priority so they don't get so they don't get put on the um, on the map, on the radar. People are going to be using Echelon because Echelons are undetectable. So unless they made a, a, a specific thing uh, with these were uh with with some of these factions where like you just don't have the passive but with echelon remember they don't whatever activity that they do they do not pop up on radar so i don't know how that's going to work uh but i feel like that's what's gonna happen a lot of people are gonna use echelon a lot of people are going to be using gsk or people are going to be using uh phantom uh I, so i believe those three highwaymen may work in this one too because of the grenade launcher and especially the turret i believe that's what people are gonna do and then, and then the new equipment that they have uh that we saw earlier was the smoke grenade so people are probably gonna do like smoke grenades and like plant and then you know somebody's probably gonna ninja diffuse i'm just waiting for that to happen but i'm happy to see that this is coming into the game so their passive is revved basically for their passive with revved is you get you start out you're in medium meter at the bottom right here once you get enough kills like in a certain amount of time it stacks up it goes to high and it's like extreme and then basically you're cranked out your mind it feels like i think where they're going from this is they're pulling this from hot shot uh for, for the game mode because with hot shot if you were getting uh if you got enough kills and you were collecting enough coins then you were actually like you had some speed and then also your reloading was faster and then also you had a little extra damage like your ttk was like actually like increased which is was it increased or yeah it was increased and it was actually pretty insane like it seemed like you were unstoppable until you died and then you lost all your coins then you went back to just being the base self but you were still able to be stopped obviously so 
that's what it seems like with the with the revved passive, uh, which is very interesting. So the cool thing, and I know they were saying like, oh, putting you can put stuff on that doesn't require you know re like faster reloading or you know faster fire rate. I wonder if you do if, instead if you do the opposite, if you have the muzzle booster, if you have the rapid fire barrel, if you have fast mag. I wonder if that stacks on top of the passive uh, ability that you get or will it just, just be like whatever you know unless it's voided because i feel like that could be a pretty broken thing <laughs> Uh, especially running already high, like super fast weapons that you can modify them to be pretty damn fast. Like the M16 shreds. And if you use the rapid fire barrel and if you use the muzzle booster, it, the gun already shoots, like it sounds automatic. If you guys ever heard it in the game, it sounds like it's an automatic weapon, but it's not. And since it's a three burst and it's a marksman, yeah, a marksman rifle, it does a lot of damage. It's like pretty much one burst shot will kill you. Unless there has been some nerfs and stuff. It's been kind of a while since I played it. So I'm not sure if they've done any address to the M16. So on top of that, using the passive for this, which is revved, I wonder if you just put on, you just keep your M16 how it is, and then you just use revved. I wonder how much of an increase does your rapid fire, uh, does the fire rate get? And I wonder like what the percentage is and like, or like, you know, like a base number that they have. Hopefully it's not something too ridiculous, but then you already know they're going to go ahead and, you know, get that fixed or they're going to like address it. We're going to fill out, address it and everything like that. So, so yeah, they were talking about, they're discussing, it goes medium high, the scrap turret. They say Said that this is a 360 degrees yes 360 degrees now i wonder how it's going to be how it works how it's designed uh is what i mean like the, for the mechanic of it do you is there like a certain like an invisible ring like a vicinity like a ring is it an los which is the line of sight like does the turret have to see you as you can see the, the eyes i wonder if like if the eyes see you then it's like all right boom shoot that guy or if i'm like behind the turret is it gonna like whip around and shoot me you know type of thing those things i want to know but obviously Obviously, won't be able to know until later on when we're able to play. But it's something I'm like very curious about. And also the thing I want to know is playing as a dead set. Can you hack this? Is it is it hackable? If not, how like how would you be like is it quick to destroy? Like, do you have to use a grenade? Can it get destroyed by an EMP grenade? That's another thing. Um, also, uh, I know a lot of people use uh phantoms, you know, and they use shields for the barriers and everything, or the mag barriers. I wonder like how many shots does it take from this weapon from this from the turret to destroy the shields. I wonder how much that is too. So that's something else I want to know. Also with the GS Commando, I, I'm sorry, I got so many questions, but with GS Commando, I wonder for like their ultimate with their the shield, the ballistic shield that they have, I wonder how many shots it takes for until that shield is destroyed or when you can't use it anymore. So that's those, those are some things that I want to see. I did see like some people dying by the turret and it looked like it's like a pretty fast killing weapon. Like there's just like no way. It's like no way for surviving from it. Um, I do like that they have the um, M79 grenade launcher. It's the same, uh, obviously like it's a two shot grenade launcher, but I believe if you shoot it once and you got to reload and shoot it again, and then you're in the cooldown for 30 seconds from what I saw. Oh, right here. Yeah, 30 seconds. I wonder if there's a, like a certain blast radius. Like, is there a damage fall off as well? So like, say for instance, there's a, like a buddy is next to me, like he's at a door or he's like over here, right? Where that, where the fridge is, right? And then I'm like, as far as I can be over here and he gets hit directly with a grenade launcher is it gonna kill me or am i gonna take an ex like like a pretty high extensive damage but still be alive because i think one of the big uh things that might be an issue is it might be a nuke and also i'm not sure if people have seen this before but with the proxy mines if you are you want to actually i want to say if you're like right on the proxy mine but if you are like say for instance you're like five steps behind your teammate and your teammate runs past the proxy mine and he gets blown up it somehow links to you too and you die because there's times where i've died around a corner when a proxy mine w went off and it killed the guy that stepped on the mine but it killed me too and i was like how sometimes it killed me through mag bears and i just never understood like how that happened as well so i'm wondering i'm just wondering if there's going to be having if there's going to be some damage fall off but like i said all this stuff is going to be uh hopefully most of these questions and stuff are going to be answered afterwards so they got the launcher they said that it's going to be you can shoot off some rounds and everything and it will completely wreck your shades which is insane and it just bounces everywhere i already know this might lower some maps this might make some maps like people's favorite maps might be not their favorites anymore especially for the echelons their map just being in this capture area just imagine if you have two if you have like even if you have one uh highwayman but just imagine if you have like two or three or worst case scenario you have a whole team 
and they all have their ults and they just spam the freaking launchers in this room oh it's ggs for you on the receiving end i, I think that's what it's going to be and it's probably going to make people very mad because i don't think the blades are destroyable like i'm not sure if you shoot the blades and then they can be destroyed or if you can throw a grenade at them or what but it seems like it's unavoidable unless i guess unless you have dead sec and like somebody has their ult and like somebody shoots off like one like shoots off a blade or something like that you can you know pull out the hack so they can disable it but i wonder like the logic behind that one like how that would work because it's just a weapon that you just shoot and like but i guess since it's electric and everything like that ha like doing the hacking and everything i guess it disables the weapon so you can't shoot it so i wonder if it's like that so the first weapon is the pp19 or what everybody would like to call it the bullfrog from call of duty or the bison but basically it's the pp19 bison all right everybody knows 50 round magazine submachine gun it is stupid accurate and it is it has a stupid amount of damage now what they said is this gun focuses on range and and damage is, is that recall so let's see it the pp19 focuses on damage and accuracy okay so damage and accuracy so basically this is like the baby ak it already has a 55 round magazine and it's going to be accurate and it's going to be and it's going to have damage i feel like this is already the meta like just without even playing the game this is going to be the meta because once you have that that gun leveled up you're probably going to run i know somebody's gonna probably going to run it they're probably going to run the muzzle booster or the rapid fire barrel or both i feel like it's going to happen because people are going to want that rate of fire up. um if not people are going to run the chrome line with a suppressor or a chrome line with or a heavy barrel too with like compensator or uh suppressor or whatever floats their boat pretty much this one's gonna be a very very interesting thing also i want to know the attachments like magazine wise because is this thing gonna have a quick mag is, is it gonna have a quick mag is it gonna have the fast mag i hope it doesn't have an extended mag because if you have an extended mag this is probably gonna be like what 100 rounds in in a submachine gun or 75 like that's already high it's like a super high capacity already so i wonder how that's gonna be the different barrels as well as well like is it gonna be the same as the other smgs with the barrels or is it going to be like changing up a bit like are there gonna be some barrels taken out or are there gonna be some barrels put in because heavy barrel i can see right now is going to melt like crazy if you do a heavy barrel with a muzzle booster i feel like it's gonna do some damage it's gonna do some a lot of damage and you're gonna have still gonna have that good rate of fire so the l86 lsw um i know i used to play i used to use this gun in multiple ubisoft games but it was the l86 I think it was it was it the L86 or L85 A1? It was the assault rifle, the AR version of it, not the uh, LMG version. It's cool. New weapon that they have for uh, LMGs. I know everybody has been running the 249, the saw, uh, because it has the magazine, the ejectable magazine, so you don't have to use the belt fed and it's not crazy um same thing with the rpk so it's cool seeing this uh it is the apparently like they said it was the balance between a ar and an lmg uh the damage is weak but you can get a good amount of uh but you have like pretty good accuracy on there so this could be curious to see how this weapon plays out i think it's gonna people are gonna play it out as an ar or they're gonna be do like an ar build to this weapon but i can't wait to use this it looks like it it hits pretty good um i know with the bison when uh they showed the damage numbers when people were getting hit it was 20 damage per bullet so that's fairly strong maybe too strong don't know uh with this weapon it looked like it was a 20 per like feel uh, 20 per bullet it looks very stable it, 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 well not very stable it looks pretty meters. it looks pretty stable it's not this too crazy it a very strong option when playing on it, it has recoil but it looks maps, like it's like a minis, horizontal ice, recoil more more than a when vertical a so like when he when the person walked in it looked like it was 21 damage it's very faint yeah it's very very faint but there's a number right here next to the like offense right here it's very faint it's a it says 21. so it may this may be 21 uh per bullet too so who knows yeah and then 21 21 damage so the hit uh was the i think for headshots is 27. that's what it looked like it said as well so it, like i said a fair weapon all right next they got the Spaz, uh, Spaz 12, uh, fan favorite, everybody's fan, well, almost, almost everybody's fan favorite weapon of a shotgun, but it is a, it's a semi-auto, thank goodness it's not a fully auto, and it's supposed to be in between the 870 MCS and the AA-12, and if you were doing weapon camel grind, if you were doing mastery grinds for shotguns, both of them were crazy, were, in, were insane to try to use, what the hell, you know, type of thing, so we, I mean, we'll see, 
because they said add a ch they said put the choke on there and then put the chrome line barrel on or i wonder if you put a heavy barrel on and then they also said take the stock off too so you can have some wiggle room so we'll see we'll see how that is so yeah they did talk about bomb one thing i will say that's very interesting about bomb what they said is that uh it trades off every round so you could be attacking and then you win or lose and then you go to defending now i know the traditional sense of what what usually happens is you play a few rounds as one side so it's like hey say for instance you had a bad round or you did a bad route or something and you're like oh next round i can you know try something else this changes that so it's like hmm i don't know because usually like i said traditionally it goes back to the whole like you know you play a few rounds and then usually like after the third round then you switch over like the team switch over to like the other uh side like so if you're attacker you're now your defender if you're defender and now your attacker things like that so i wonder how this is going to play out it may be kind of weird trying to study like you know how routes would would be for bomb and how like the map would play out as well so this one is going to be very interesting to look at um i'm but I'm, I'm excited to play this i'm excited to play this mode growing up playing call of duty i the, my favorite mode is search and destroy i love the one modes um and everything and i like you know just trying to see if i can make a good play uh and like see to plant the bomb make or get uh ninja defuses or or like who knows try to pull out a clutch as well so i'm excited private matches i do like this uh Aix said it earlier or you know pat uh patrick price aka, AKA Aix, was talking about it before uh grassroots using private matches for grassroots or learning how to play the game or study a map or things like that this is really cool doing 1v1 matches and stuff yeah you're doing wagers and stuff as well it's cool because like right now since we don't have private matches it's more of of a we're doing like kill races like we have to we all have to like team up and then jump into a game and see how many kills that we can get usually it's in an occupy mode i probably in domination but i think it's usually in the occupy mode so the thing is it kind of ruins i guess that experience of that because you're not really capturing the objective you're just trying to go for kills this one's gonna be different because maybe now we're gonna play the modes we're gonna actually play the modes instead of just doing the kills we're probably gonna play the modes or if we're gonna do the kills we do tdm which is gonna be pretty cool i didn't see a free for all in here but this probably later on um down the road they might add a free for all in there this one's gonna be pretty cool i did like how you said yeah grassroots uh tournaments and stuff casters content creators is just like this is gonna be awesome to see like I, I i feel like this may bring people back especially with uh like doing different things like that like clips and stuff all right so this is what i really want this is the last one i'm gonna cap off with which i actually am like really looking at this and this is really cool so going into season two codename buzz then we have orchard and then we have horde um looking at orchard looks like something like assassin's creed I'm not gonna lie it looks like assassin's creed obviously they're wearing a hood and then the weapon on the season four looks like why does that person look like a mute I, i'm just thinking of mute because like right here looks like the uh looks like the seal canisters on a gas mask and then you have the helmet as well and then this looks like it's gonna be a marksman rifle it looks like it's gonna be the sr25 or an m i think it's the m110 going in here so they have the three new weapons uh we have new faction which is the highwayman we have three new weapons which is the spaz 12 the l86 and the bison new device which is gonna be a smoke grenade which is awesome then we got bomb mode which is that private matches are gonna be in the beta event challenges that's gonna be cool too i wonder if it, like if the event challenges are gonna like lead to like having earning camos earning like certain weapon decals skins cosmetics that'd be pretty cool objective progress uh weapon xp so now like if you are an objective player but you are just getting destroyed in kills now you'll be able to uh level up your guns too shotguns so now i'm gonna play now you can play more objective based and run your shotguns and still level up your shotguns which is cool improved battle pass progression speed nice that's, I know that's going to be, that was adjusted and being moved up. New weapon mastery skins. Now, they didn't show that one. So I wonder what kind of skin selection they're doing on this one. And hopefully it's not going to be like uh, the previous one where it's like, you know, you, you go from 200 to 300. There's that empty gap. There's nothing in 250. Hopefully they have like, like a super like based one for like the upcoming masteries like i i mentioned to uh aches on twitter one time if you could put something in the, in the 250 range maybe in the three like you know 300 going to i don't know 400 have something in the 350 range that kind of like goes into the new mastery canvas that'd be cool uh because that 50 that 50 level increment it's a great feeling because you're like all right i got it now the next one i just need 50 more levels and i'm there and you just and you just keep going and just keep going and keep going and keep going so because there's a new mastery skin it looks like we're gonna be pulling out the level c again so that's gonna be fun a new ranked rewards i wonder what the new one's gonna be um i know the one that they have now has been posted on twitter if you reach legend i believe which is top 500 they get a 
paintball themed Lavoa C and it looks really cool. Mantle, so here's the quality of life, new mantle improvements. So I wanna see how that is. Uh, player collision improvements. I hope for the player collision movements. I just, I so hope this for player collision. I hope that I can walk through my teammates and I can shoot through my teammates because sometimes it gets very annoying where I'm shooting at somebody and my teammate jumps in front of me and I can't do anything. Or when I'm trying to outrun a grenade, somebody shoots, like throws a grenade at me and I'm trying to run and then I have a teammate that blocks a door. Hopefully that is fixed. Also, there's been player collision uh, issues when you are, I don't know, running and sliding in front of an enemy or into an enemy where your body gets infused into the enemy's body. And then if you have a rifle compared to them who have an SMG, pretty much they win because all they have to do is like back up a little bit and shoot and then they kill you, they shoot you. Somehow you die. Player collision, uh, footstep audio improvements. Okay. So we got a new mode and a new map type. So I'm guessing this new map type is going to be is going to be made especially for this new mode. Limited time modes, which is going to be awesome. Oh, there's for all all the seasons. That's cool. Uh, private matches, so good. That's when they're going to go into like its official state. Bots mode. So if you want to practice, I don't know, running a class on your on. Uh, yeah, running a class, seeing like what the TTK is on a weapon. That's going to be pretty cool. That's what I'm guessing for the bots mode. Or it's just a, you know, train. So you're not sitting at the uh, firing range and just shooting at, you know, stationary targets. Now you got stuff that move. Now I wonder for the bots mode, if you are able to like adjust difficulty. Like if you can have have them focus on movement where they're just like sliding everywhere or they shoot back or like they're sneaky or ratty. Who knows? Uh, they use abilities. That'd be cool too. Like have like different difficulties. That would be actually pretty sick. Uh, let's see here. Um, so we got the daily rewards. Uh, they are adding a prestige system. Okay. So um, I wonder what the max rank is going to be or the max level overall is going to be until you prestige. I wonder if they're going to go up to... Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go to a thousand. I know we already broke 200. I think some people are already at 300. Prob yeah, I think people are at 300. I could be wrong. I know I'm like at 100 and some, um, I'm not way up there, but I'm like past 100, I know that for sure. So I wonder if it's like, you know, probably like 500 and then you get to prestige, who knows? But it's gonna be interesting because it's gonna be after season two. Let's see, faction masteries. I'm guessing if you get a, get a certain amount of kills, but you know, you develop uh, a certain amount of kills and experience and everything, you probably unlock like a cool cosmetic uh, being a, a faction, mat like have a fast, a faction mastery um like reward that's gonna be pretty cool i think that that would be sick um and also this makes people want uh makes people move towards other factions to try out or to run uh to see if they can get the mastery so that's cool because there's more content so instead of just only mastery weapons now you can do factions you can do prestiges um things like that that's pretty cool they said kill cams replay replay uh death replay cam which is kill cam season four we're gonna do the same thing uh it's pretty much the same stuff except a major event takeover so i wonder if this is gonna be like i was gonna say halloween but no because this season is around halloween so i wonder if this is gonna be like somewhere into what this is gonna go into next year i know for sure so maybe it's like an anniversary thing maybe Maybe it's like an anniversary thing that probably happens um, season four. Who knows? Uh, Weapons Mastery 2.0. So they're going to revamp the mastery weapon mastery system. Maybe uh, weapon skin challenges. So now you can do certain challenges to earn skins. Hopefully it's nothing crazy like uh, get point blank kills or something like that. Hopefully it's just, you know, get a kill streak or something like that. Hopefully something. And then the last thing that they have here um, is at the very bottom. It's kind of hard to see because um, it, the little thing over here is just blocking away but it says ongoing net code matchmaking and anti-cheat improvements so as it's going as it's going it's going to be happening and then obviously on the bottom it says list of features are subject to change and may release at launch or during the season the roadmap uh, will be regularly updated with the latest information so this is what we got right now for year one we got a new faction we got three new guns we got three new maps and i'm so happy that Air and space is coming back. I am so excited for that. Uh, bomb mode, again, super excited for that one to come out because it is S and D, so it's gonna be a whole new experience and it's gonna be a whole a whole new content. I wonder if they're gonna add proxy chat though. I wonder if proxy chat is gonna be a thing. Um, like, you know, like in between modes and stuff, that'd be cool, like, like Call of Duty. Usually a lot of crazy stuff happens and that's literally a lot of content. But yeah, overall, it looks good. It looks promising. There's a lot of content coming in in the way. Um, it looks like for season two, it's a good amount, uh, especially for the weapon XP. So they're still working on, you know, masteries and stuff like that. Uh, that's like kind of the main focus, not main focus, but that's kind of a uh, still up there for the content uh, to like, you know, content wise bomb mode. 
It's going to be awesome as well. Content ish uh, is still up there. Yeah, I, no, I would say it's up there. It's up there in content. Limited time modes. I wonder what those are going to what those are going to be. I know people who have uh, in Discord have talked about suge had suggestions and everything like that. So I wonder what they're going to uh, put as a limited time mode. So out of looking at it, this like, what do you guys think about season two that's happening? And also, what do you guys think about year one, the roadmap that you see right here so far? Is it something that you think you're going to play? Um, I feel like I'm going to be playing it. It's going to be pretty cool. I know other games are going to be out or are out at the time. You I mean, you got Black Ops 6 coming out in the end of October and then like a few other games that are going to be coming out later on. So what do you guys think? I mean, I feel like I'm going to be playing this. Um, I really want to get more into the caster side or like analytics side of this because this looks really cool. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I have. For the whole thing and obviously make content off of this too so yeah so let me know what you guys think about the season two season three season four uh pretty much the whole roadmap and what do you guys think do you guys think you're gonna if you guys are taking a break from x fight are you guys gonna come back and try these things out try these modes out and see what it's like or are you guys not i mean either way it's totally fine and uh yeah that's gonna be it for me oh sorry by the way Thank you guys so much for uh, 200 subscribers on the YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. It is amazing that you guys, uh, you know, guys are like finding finding my content. You guys are enjoying it and liking it. It's awesome. It is awesome. Um, I'm glad that I'm just doing this as a, really I'm doing it as a hobby. It's just fun to do uh, making videos and everything and also streaming it as well. So um, I have been streaming it on Twitch and YouTube and also on the YouTube vertical platform, but we're going to do some changes on the vertical platform so you can see some more overlays and stuff as well. So I'm still working on that. Other than that, I guess the last thing I would say is I have created a discord. Uh, I reopened up my discord and everything and uh, re redid everything pretty much as a place to chill. And if you're looking for, uh, you know, job listings in esports or in the video game industry, um, I have a section for that as well. So if you guys want to check out the Discord, I'll make sure I have it linked down below as well. And that's going to be it for me. All right. Salve Chino. Peace.